Okay, Crackerby, Stillwater, Oklahoma. These are my kids and my secretary will be along later. Crackerby, you have the flamingo suite. I think you'll find it quite satisfactory. Right? <laughs> Does it cover the whole penthouse floor? No, sir, there are three other suites on the same floor. But your flamingo suite is a large one. Get to the manager. Anything wrong, Wilson? Mr. Holbrook, this is Mr. Crackerby. Okay, Crackerby. Oh. Mr. Holbrook, our manager. Mr. Crackerby has been assigned the flamingo suite. I ordered the whole penthouse floor. I like a lot of room. Mr. Crackerby, those other suites on that floor are being held for people. The right people, the better people, the social mob. Oh, Mr. Crackerby, that's the most unfortunate way of putting it. I thought it was pretty good. <laughs> Let's just say that those suites are being held for some of our oldest and most respected clients. After all, you haven't visited us before, and we were kind enough to give you the flamingo suite. Listen, little buddy, let's not fuss. You're gonna give me the whole top floor in exactly five minutes. <laughs> Mr. Crackley, I will not be bullied, especially by somebody I don't know. This hotel caters to a certain type of person. Five minutes. May I use your telephone? Please. Here it comes, Operation Torpedo. Again? Yeah. What's up, Chief? Operation Torpedo. I'm at the Havenhurst Hotel, Palm Beach. You've got five minutes. Got you, okay. Five minutes. That's what he said, Simpkins. We've got five minutes. Slim, that'll be an all-time record. Well, get off the phone and I'll try it. For you, Mr. Holbrook. Holbrook speaking. You bought the hotel. Ten seconds over. How could you buy this entire hotel in five minutes? Direct dialing. <laughs> Excuse me, sir, Come but I... here. You... Sit down. <laughs> what do you know about me? Oh. Well, the uh, scuttlebutt has it that you just bought this elegant joint because they didn't put down the red carpet for you. I'm told you pulled the same stunt in Newport and Bar Harbor. And Hot Springs, Arkansas. <laughs> You're very big in oil. Oil, shipping, airplanes. Hotels. Hotels, natural gas, motors, anything that'll keep the... Wolf from the door? Well, then, they, uh, they must be right. Who must be right? All my rich friends. They tell me that you're one of the richest... The richest. The richest man in the world. Well, the world 
Well, that's, that's pretty big. Well, then, let's just say America. Let's leave it the world. <laughs> well, that's all you need to know about me now, about you. All right, about me. But before I tell you anything about me, there's something I'd like to know about me. Mainly, uh, why am I here? I sent for you. And when you send for people, they always snap to it. Well, you snap to it? I'm curious. Now, let's really find out something about you. I've had you thoroughly investigated. Say, this is all pretty James Bondy. James who? You know, James Bond, famous investigator. I use the Pinkertons. Good outfit. When I hire a man, I like to learn all about him, and I've got it right here. Uh, your name is St. John... Uh, What's the matter? Well, sir, no disrespect to the Pinkertons. Well, is your sir. name St. John Quincy or ain't it's it? It's pronounced Sinjin. Sinjin? I'm sorry, sir, but that's the way it's pronounced. You English? No. Good. Why? Why what? Why is it good that I'm not English? Because I'm asking the questions. That's right. <laughs> Sinjin uh, Quincy. I'll just call you Quincy. 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 <laughs> now, may we at least agree on how to pronounce the name of your college? Harvard. Touche. Harvard is Harvard, and don't you touche me. Save the French lessons for my kids. Kids? Let's go. Well, let's go where? Up to see the kids, see what they think about you. Mr. Crackerby, would you mind throwing me one straight pitch? I have three kids, they have no mother, and I need someone to help me look after them. Mr. Crackerby, are you proposing marriage? Making money left me no time to develop a sense of humor. <laughs> Mr. Crackerby. Mr. Crackerby, uh, I'm sorry, that wasn't very nice of me. I, I was just being flip, a joke. You bring in oil wells with a drill, not a fish fork. See, I haven't had time for all the little finer things. But my kids, somebody's got to teach them all the stupid little niceties to help them get in. In? In where? Society, high society. Mr. Crackerby, how do you define high society? I define it as something that I'm out of, and I don't like being out of anything unless I'm the one who wants out. Ma'am, <laughs> go up my kids are going through life being snubbed. <laughs> well, I made something for you. Oh, thank you, sir. What is it? A wooden nickel. Don't ever take none. <laughs> In the first place, let's take your finances. You are broke. Pronounce that perfectly. How come a guy like you is broke? Well, I believe it's mostly due to a, a tremendous lack of money. Would you like to hear something? What? I've asked the Pinkertons to make a personal evaluation of you. Would you like to hear it? No, not really. It's cheaper than psychoanalysis. <laughs> this guy is a gentleman. He's not Hollywood's idea of a gentleman. He is a gentleman. Sir, I really think if you don't mind it. He comes from a good family. He knows everybody. He's a nice guy, shoots good golf, plays great tennis, and is a good dancer. And he's educated enough to stay ahead of your kids. He may be interested in your offer because he hasn't got a dime. <laughs> He's a man who is very good at weekends, but not very good in the middle of the week. I missed the mole on my hip. No, they didn't. <laughs> Mr. Crackerby, if I don't want this job, I mean really... <laughs> Mr. Crackerby, if I don't want this job, I mean really don't want it, is there any chance that you'll permit me not to take it? I doubt it. Depends on what the kids think of you. They're back on the play deck. Hey, Pop! On the TV, a guy just got eight shots out of a six-shooter. Turn that thing off. This is Mr. Sinjin Quincy. OK, Crackerby Jr., Hobart Crackerby, where's your sister? In her room. And boy, is she sore. What about? Hobart swindled her. <laughs> I did not. I treated fair and square. 
two of my OLs in Oklahoma for her one little bitty one in Texas. And the one you got just happened to come in, hmm? Fifty barrels a day. You were part of the geologist's report. I played a hunch. Excuse me, we're not talking about real oil wells. You'll get used to it. You see, I'm trying to give these characters a head start. I've taught them a little something about the oil business, and they all own some leases of their own. I advance them the money to buy. And charge us plenty of interest. I'm the only one you could get it from. No bank would loan a plug nickel to a pipsqueak like you. I still think 20% is highway robbery. Take it or leave it. Rattlesnake <laughs> did to me. Easy, girl, easy. You have absolutely no ethics. Ethics? By the way, Cynthia, this is Mr. Sinjin Quincy. Hello, Cynthia. Hi. Hey, Pop, what's ethics? <laughs> There's an opener for you, Mr. Quincy. How would you define ethics? Ethics. Well, the definition seems to vary a lot these days. Well, let's hear yours. Mine. Oh, well, that's a system of moral principles by which men live, or should live or have to live if they're to remain human beings. I bet he hasn't got a quarter. <laughs> Not bad, Quincy. Not bad. People, I'm figuring on hiring Mr. Quincy here as a, as a kind of a, a kind of a tutor. Hey, Pop, what are you springing on? What's going on? Well, just this. We've been down here three days, and nobody invited me or you to anything or any place. There's an unseen fence. The same fence that we've been banging into all around the country. Why don't we just go home? No, we're going to bust through. You might not like it on the other side. I don't care as long as there's a fence there, we're going to bust through it. Papa, it's just that we're nouveau riche. Well, that's better than being nouveau poor. <laughs> the Astors and the Whitneys and the Vanderbilts were once nouveau rich. Now listen, everybody. This fella here knows all the right people, and they know him. Now, he can teach you the things that I can't. He can teach you how to act right, and how to talk right, and how to dress right. And he knows all about stuff like tennis, and polo, and dancing, and French talk. Why do we have to know that? As a matter of fact, you really don't. I say they do. <laughs> uh, look, I'm not going to shove this guy down your throat, but I want you to give this some careful consideration. I now know how a heifer feels at an auction. Well, what's the verdict? Mr. Crackerby, it's true I am broke. I was right. Would it help if I told everyone that I don't intend to take this job? You mean you're turning us down? Bless your avaricious little heart, yes. Why? Because I don't approve social climbing. Nobody ever turns pop down. Now, that's something I do approve of. Now, I haven't accomplished very much in my life, but I feel that I will have justified my existence if I can be the one man in the world who turned down a chance to be purchased by O.K. Crackerby. Hi, <laughs> George, I did that rather well. Good day. I guess we lost him. Hey, Pop, you gonna let him get away with that? You people want him? I thought he was sort of nice. He was a great pool shot. The main thing, Pop, is that I never saw you get turned down by anybody. Well, now there might be some little something we can do. <laughs> Started moving. Operation Sinjin Quincy. Sinjin Quincy! The guy you thought was St. John Quincy. <laughs> I have no car. A taxi? No, thanks. I'll walk. You're coming, Mr. Quincy. You're coming. This is completely your disposal, Mr. Quincy. I have no car. Well, someone just died and left you one. <laughs> How did Crackerby get hold of you so fast? Where to, Mr. Quincy? Take me to Jones Sports Shop on the Avenue. Thank you, sir. Would you like a drink, Mr. Quincy? This is going to be a tough fight.
Marvin. Not what I said. Now follow through. Follow through. That's right. Follow through. Ah, may I? Full swing. Keep your eye on the ball. Keep your eye on the ball. That's right. Full swing. Good. Sorry I'm late, Mr. Jones. It won't happen again. Oh, that's all right, Quincy. It doesn't matter. Now. How's that again? <laughs> Quincy, this is very difficult and embarrassing for me, but a few minutes ago, I received a telephone call from... Don't tell me, I'll tell you. Crackerby Enterprises. Yes, but how? They offered to buy out your shop at a magnificent profit. Provided, of course, you fire all male employees named Sinjin Quincy. How oh, the devil? That's just who it is, Mr. Jones, the devil. He's battling me for my soul. Congratulations. I hope you get plenty. Wait a minute, Quincy. I haven't accepted it yet. After all, there are some things that a man... I mean, I can't be persuaded so easily. Mr. Jones, take it. After all, I'm expendable. That's true. <laughs> How's it? Marvin, give it up. Give the whole thing up. Give it up. Give it up. Hi, Sinji. Don't leave yet. I just came in to buy a reel. A big one. Too late. For selfish. I resigned. Or maybe I was fired. <laughs> Tough. Just when you were starting to get nowhere. <laughs> Come on. Where? Oh, I feel like buying you an overpriced lunch somewhere. Let's go to uh, Paletti's, that new place. I've never been there, but I hear it's great. I hear it's expensive. This is kind of stupid. It's a gesture of defiance. Do you have the price of such a defiant luncheon? I'll go cash a defiant check. <laughs> Marvin? Yeah? Swing! <laughs> what a guy. Yes, I hear he's loaded. Loaded? You have no idea. This car is his. That shop is now his. And now, Mr. O.K. Crackerby wants to buy me. Sell. He wants me to be some sort of a uh, tutor companion to his kids. <laughs> Picture me. I can. You know, I have a feeling you'd be awfully good at something like that. Since I've been worried about you. I've been trying to think of a job you might really be good at. And suddenly, when you mentioned looking after kids, something clicked. I mean, something snapped. Now, listen, you've got to hear me out. We're relatives. We're very distant. You're a Wentworth. My mother was a Quincy. All right, so we're third cousins. But you know, I have never felt very cousinly. That'll do. Cousin. Why do you always say that'll do to me? <laughs> Good morning, Mr. Quincy. Good morning, Mr. Hall. Will my account hold still for a hundred bucks? You just deposited five thousand dollars with us this morning. I did. <laughs> How clever of me. <laughs> what a guy. Where to, sir? It take us to Paletti's. Yes, sir. Paletti's for lunch. Over. <laughs> nice to see you again, Mr. Quincy. What did you say? Nice to see you again, Mr. Quincy. Crackerby. Oh, no, sir. I'm Oscar. Yes, Mr. Quincy, step the radio. Swifty. You've never been here before? You see what's going on? It's Crackerby. <laughs> no, I don't smoke. I don't think I could resist someone who wanted me so much. Well, I can. Soup's good. Soup's good. I wonder if Crackerby's in the kitchen cooking. Isn't it though he's trying to get you to do something creepy? He wants you to help his kids. You might even teach that family your viewpoint on social climbing. Do some good. Well, I won't be pushed around. Five thousand dollars, a limousine, a chauffeur. That's some pushing around. Come on, I'll get the check, take you home, and then I'll go see Crackerby and give him back his money. I may roll it up in a little ball and make him eat it. <laughs> check, please. There is no check, Mr. Quincy. There is no check. I insist on a check. It is impossible, Mr. Quincy. Your check has been paid. It has been paid by who? I don't know. Well, I do. Oh, Mr. Quincy. Mr. Quincy. Mr. Quincy. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, Junior Hobart, guess who's here? 
Where's your father? I want to talk to him. Mr. Crow! Hi, Mr. Quincy! Hi, Junior. Want to play some pool? No, I don't want to play. Why not? Hi, Mr. Quincy! Hello, Hobart. Now, where's your father? I don't know, but I'm awfully glad you came. I'm glad, too. Me, too. Where is your father? I don't know, but I'm awfully glad you came. I'm glad, too. Me, too. Oh, no, wait. We went through all that. We're trying to apologize. You've nothing to apologize for. We want to apologize for our father. He doesn't understand men like you. He thinks money can buy anybody. He's got no ethics. <laughs> Mr. Quincy, our father's doing all this for us. He means well. You see, we really have been kind of lonely, and we don't like being snubbed. Well, it's a, it's a hard thing to explain to a, a youngster. We know you have pride, but we need your help. We want to learn from you. Yeah, maybe some of those pool shots. We need you. Please, mister, won't you please come here and toot? Oh, Bart, a tutor teaches. He doesn't toot. Gee, I feel smarter already. <laughs> Mr. Quincy. Honest, Mr. Quincy. We like you. Did you hear that? Oh, Bart likes you. I heard it. <laughs> Now hear this, all of you. If I take this job... Yay! If I take this job, I'll have to be in complete charge. Charge of everything. Your manners, speech, your habits. And incidentally, there'll be no more of those fights I saw when I first came here. We're going to regulate the oil industry around here. Now tell me something about your, uh, your education. Cynthia, have you had any French? English? Latin? How far did you go with your history? Morning, Fenton. Morning, sir. <laughs> you craggerbees. One of the history questions I asked yesterday was, uh, Christopher Columbus, what was his greatest accomplishment? And Junior's answer was, Christopher Columbus, his greatest accomplishment was that he borrowed a big pile of dough from Queen Isabella. Not a bad answer. <laughs> what did you have in mind? Well, he might have mentioned something about discovery, America. Well, he couldn't have pulled it off without that little loan. Exactly. <laughs> your children have an entirely false sense of values. Can't buy everything with money, you know. Make me a small list of one thing you can't buy with money. Can't buy people. I bought you. I'm here because your children need me. I like them. I think I can help them. You didn't buy me. Mr. St. John Quincy. St. John Quincy. Mr. St. John Quincy, you know I can fire you. No, you can't. No, oh, yes, I can. You just watch me. You're fired. Mr. Crackerby, may I point something out? When I came here, I came here of my own volition. When I leave, it will be the same way, of my own volition. I'm staying. Any questions? What's this? It's a man. It belongs to you. <laughs> <laughs> 